This is a little flip side project I have going on, trying to turn uh, dollars into more dollars. Uh, Ryan. Ryan is one of those guys that has a thousand ideas and doesn't complete any of them. He's also somebody that is fulfilling whatever hole that he has in his emotions by buying things that he can't afford. We're gonna get Ryan to get rid of every asset that he bought that he claims is worth more than he paid for. These are choices he didn't need to make. They were bad choices. They're the reason he's in trouble. This is a guy that is seeking help without even being aware of it. We're gonna be the ones that help him. Going from broke that empowers young people drowning in debt. I can't do this to become the CEOs of their own lives. I'm Dan Rosenzweig, CEO of Chegg. My co-host, Tanya Rapley, and I are here to help people find their way out of suffocating debt. This is the year. What you're about to see are real-time, unfiltered conversations airing the same week in which we shot them. This is Going From Broke in real time. Of the things that you were assigned to do, have you actually done and completed any of them? Dan, so I definitely think I did all of them to the extent that would satisfy what you're asking and what I would expect of my own self. Not so much. The inventory is incomplete. That's something that's going to take a much more meticulous approach, which unfortunately I just didn't have time to do because of my busy schedule. I, I can't put revenue on the back burner. Um, I did some research and called around on the Prius, the truck, and I compiled an inventory of my larger ticket items and am putting together a sales schedule for those. So the answer is no, you haven't done any of them yet. Well, let me, I have a little uh, notepad here. Let me give you a play by play real quick. So the payoff for my Toyota is 24,200 and change. The truck is 46,5. So I'd be looking at about 35,000. So in other words, every in, single thing 11, you- 11,400 so, so Ryan, Ryan, so it means every single thing you bought depreciated in tremendous value, so you never should have bought it. This is probably a good time to mention just full frontal honesty, all cards on the table. I made an agreement with my mechanic to purchase a second set of wheels for the truck, actually including tires for $2,500. Well, why do you, cons first of all, why would, you're broke. You made a phone call that said, I'm broke, I need help, and you agreed to buy tires you don't need with rims you don't need for $2,500? Why? Sex appeal. I think that okay. it's gonna help with marketability, advertising, selling and closing. It's a write-off. And I can make my money back. The product new is worth about 5K. I could probably sell it after using it for a few months for more than what I paid for it. We had lined up today one of the world's premier entrepreneurs to talk to you today. A true serial entrepreneur. He's world renowned for inspiring real entrepreneurs. And now I'm reluctant to bring him on because you're not a real entrepreneur. You're a serial excuse maker, not a serial entrepreneur. I've got Gary V waiting. Tell me why, when I talk to him privately next, that I should tell him it's actually okay to talk to you. Because he's gonna be embarrassed if what he tells you to do, you start making excuses for also. So tell me why. And you've got less than guy. two minutes because I got him waiting and I don't keep a man like, you know, no evidence of that. The famous Gary V. Um, thank you for being willing to come on Going From Broke and to help a young entrepreneur. I have been, uh, as you know, uh, a, an admirer of yours for a long time. What made you say, you know what, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to this kid today. I think when you love a game so much, you always wanna give back to the game. And we hear that a lot in sports, and I know you're a solid sports fan as well. You know, and so <laughs> entrepreneurship is my game. I didn't get into entrepreneurship because it was the cool thing of the day. Entrepreneurship got into me, and I think that more people need to understand that truth. 
I just want to say no, no BS here, and I, I am literally the Leonardo da Vinci of BS, but I was that kid in second grade <laughs> where, like, they're going around the room, like, I want to be a firefighter, I want to be an astronaut, like, I want to own a business. So, so Gary, just as an example, Ryan bought a $10,000 motorcycle during Sell the it. pandemic, despite already Sell having it. about seventy thousand dollars. Yeah, Sell exactly. It. Sell it. So, Ryan, his Sell, view. Yeah, yeah. Sell everything. Have nothing. Walk. I see a strategy mistake because you've got to stop the bleeding. It's almost like you're bleeding to death over here. You're like, but I've got a toothache, Gary. I'm like, you're bleeding to death. The other thing you got to pay attention to is that people are scared to list the thing because telling us and everybody else that you're gonna sell it makes it seem optically like you're successful. But when you actually list it, now you're in the real game. You're not on the practice field anymore. You gotta list it, my man. You're bleeding to death. Nobody cares that you have a toothache. Totally, I understand the optics of it really is you know, one of the critical factors here. And um, I guess, and no, please no, 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 correct no, no, me no. if I'm wrong here. No, but... real, real quick, real, no. real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt you. The optics are the only thing in the world that you should not care about. To your point, Ryan and I just got into a very vigorous debate over here's a guy that's broke. He's got three cars, he, does, he, he needs one, and we told him to sell them, and rather than sell them, you know what he did? He committed to buying $2,500 worth of new tires and rims for the truck we want him to sell because what were the words you used, Ryan? It gives you what? Sex appeal? Do you know what my greatest hope is a couple minutes into this? Is that one day you and I in 20 years will have a beer and we will watch this video and you will laugh at yourself the way that anybody who's ever operationally created success is laughing at you right now. You know, I'm listening to everything you guys are saying and I think that... Can you, can you answer the question? How many years have you been doing business? How many years? Have you ever stopped and said, why don't I ever make money? No, no, I make, I make money. I just spend it on stupid things and frivolously. No, you don't make money. You generate revenue, but you don't make money. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a word called profit. Have you Googled it? (laughs) I'm familiar with the terminology. (laughs) <laughs> that, should probably Google it. The, the, there's been sodas thrown at the screen at this point. Not because they're mad at you or they hate you, but because they're desperately trying to figure out how to get you out of this perspective tunnel you're in because it's broken, my good friend. And I don't want that to be the case for you. Making sales is not making money. You need net profit. My goal is to be debt free. If I can be in a metropolitan area within the next two years doing something that I want to do more than what I'm doing now, then like get rid of everything. I don't need the cars, all that, they're gone. The cars are, I understand I am laden with debt and that is the cherry on top. That's the most important thing to get rid of. I just, I also got to keep cash. Um, So that's where I was drawing a bit of a disconnect. Uh, my mom's house, which I'm currently living in, is pending foreclosure, and I have to come up with about a sum of $30,000 cash. And uh, I'm not paying rent because no one's paying rent right now. But she doesn't really have any money to put towards this. So if the house it were to be saved, it's going to be for me, which is they need 30K cash. So I've got to see if I can even get that first, and then if I can get that, hey, I'm brother, not going to get that if I'm brother. paying. Brother, you know. that imaginary beer we're having in 22 years, I'm gonna go to this part first, this exact part. And I'm gonna grab you and be like, and this is my great dream. I'm so proud of the way you've evolved over these two, three decades. Now, just to remind you where you started, watch these 34 seconds. It's one of the most selfish statements that a human has ever delivered. You're not appreciating that the things that you're doing don't match the things that you said you did them for. Can I ask you a question? What what is your dream entrepreneurship life look like? Damn, I don't even know if I want to tell you guys right now. This is you guys are hammering me. 
Yeah, no, I want to be like an angel investor. I, I want to help people start their own companies. Um, what I'd really like to be doing in the next two to five years is what I like to call the New York Blockchain Project, where I just pair startup companies that are focused on this tech sector with people that will invest in them. And then 10, 20 years from now, um, I want to get into biotech and create a sustainable technology that will help re-aerate the atmosphere to re reverse the effects of global warming. Um, so yeah, but I can't do any of that right now because I fixed decks. Right, let me tell you this. I actually have career advice. I think you should become the greatest entertainer, comedian of all time by your incredible gift, this is a talent I've rarely seen, to put together an unbelievable amount of buzzwords together to deliver sentences of dramatic delusion. You, there's a big difference between practical optimism and straight and utter delusion.